Art Bergman is our guest. Actually, we have two guests in this one interview. The first voice you hear will be Russell Broom, musician, bassist. Well, he plays everything. He's a producer. He's a composer and uh, works with, uh, well, he works with Jan Arden and he works with Art Bergman and many others. He was, uh, he and Art co-produced Art's new album called Shadow Walk and it came out yesterday. And I told this to Art in the interview that it's the best album he's ever done and he's done many. He's, uh, but you know, I didn't expect to be interviewing him at this time in his life. I thought he was a goner. He lived a hard life, tearing up stages and terrifying people like myself and interviewers in the music industry for about 50 years. He helped lay the foundation for the punk scene in Vancouver. And now, all those years later, two things happened to him. Art lost the love of his life, his wife of 31 years, Sherry D. Sombrini. Almost everyone that knew them thought that Art would be the first to go. And literally, in the same moment in time, was invested into the Order of Canada. If you, if you think about where you, the places you've seen Art, how he survived is beyond me. Well, actually, it's told in The Longest Suicide, the Jason Schneider book. This is Art Bergman, 2023, trying to survive through music the grief and loss of Sherry. Also, living his life now as a member of the Order of Canada, he's moved back to Vancouver, and this music, this, this music is really good. Through the tracks, it starts through the pain, the suffering, the loss, and works its way through to hope at the end. And the video version can be seen on the Terry David Mulligan YouTube channel. I'm going to start this interview with Russell Broom, who is his co-producer and his support in the studio. Russell also uh, produces and works closely with Jan Arden, two more different artists you couldn't possibly find on the planet. We're going to start with uh, Russell because he was in the room with Art as these songs unfolded. And, and as an observer, I just wanted to ask him a couple of questions. So let's start with Russell Broom talking about Art Bergman. I believe I have found Russell in his studio, Russell Broom. Is it called the yes. Broom Closet? What do you call it? Yeah, the Broom Closet. <laughs> I just made that up. Is that true? Did you actually? <laughs> yeah, it's true. Yeah, well, uh, <laughs> have mercy. Uh, you, you sent me, I just said, so what are you up to? I was looking at your webpage as well. It told me a lot of that. However, mm -hmm. new music coming from Jan Arden. Yes. It's kind of a mystery project, and we've been working on it over the last eight months. But yeah, I did her last record um, that got released last year, and we're just trying to keep the creative juices flowing and try some new avenues, and uh, yeah, it's different. Well, what That's do all we, I can say. What do we want Jan to be? Don't we, don't we have a say? Uh, I, I would hope you want her to be as Jan Arden as possible, <laughs> and that's kind of what we're trying to do. So Okay. And you're co-writing with her? Keeping that up over the last almost 30 years. <laughs> um, now, tell me about your relationship with Art Bergman. Where did that start? Well, yeah. Uh, you know, I, I inherited half of an Art Bergman record a couple of years ago that was partly done, but uh, still needed a fair bit of work doing to it. Was that late stage? And as late stage Empire Dementia, yeah. yeah. So him and I basically completed it together over uh, the COVID pandemic lockdown period. And uh, it was an adventure. Well, he, he must have been, I, I, I believe he was reaching out because everybody had to find a way to put someone else in the room with them. Mm. Uh, some people can spark all by themselves. They can do that. But mm -hmm. you coming into his uh, uh, writing sequence of events would be, uh, he, may, he might be looking for you as a guitarist or as a sideman, whatever, because you, you play your instruments. But d he knew about your songwriting as well? Yeah, I think he knew a bit about me. Um, you know, we didn't really travel in, in similar circles. You know, I my kind of early punk rock era was playing with Jerry Jerry and the Sons of Rhythm Orchestra and touring yeah. across Canada. Yeah. And I've done a lot of records for a band called Chicks Dig It as well. So, you know, I guess I but I'm always kind of in, you know, the music I listen to when I go home is it's more indie rock and roll, noisy, fun stuff. You know, I sometimes I'm, I'm good at things that I don't necessarily like <laughs> not referring to any artist we've spoken to but you know the music i consume and the music i listen to isn't always what i work on um but in art's case it kind of those two worlds sort of collided which was neat for me um but yeah it's with art it's 
my job is to be a facilitator. It's to get a machete out and, and clear the path and sort of give him the ability to be as clear and as upfront with what he needs to say and how he wants to say it. And uh, I love that part of being a producer. It's a really, that's a really fulfilling part of the job. But there has to be agreement on both sides of the the, the microphone. That, In uh, Art's case, it's more disagreement. You know, I think you have to fight <laughs> for what you want with it. And, uh, and that's great. And, you know, part of my, my production philosophy is I, when I get in the room with an artist, I try and make definitive statements about things, not because I feel I have the answer, but because that triggers a dialogue where people have conviction and they say what they really mean and really believe rather than the old, I may be this, we could do that, you know, because tentative is the kiss of death with yeah. music for me. Yeah. And um, I try and eliminate that. And art doesn't have much tentativeness to him, which is great. <laughs> <laughs> so, so between that first record yeah. and this record, mm. several compelling events happened in Art's life. One, mm -hmm. he lost his, his soul in Sherry. He mm -hmm. lost his wife. And, and we know how much he loved her. And he, he was given the order of freaking Canada. Like, how how dynamic does your life need to be? <laughs> you know, like I, there's no other way to look at that. It's, it's the ecstasy and the tragedy in one. Like I, I can't believe the stuff that the, the accolades he's earned and the pain he has to go through as a human being. It's remarkable. I think it's bittersweet is what it is. Mm. Uh, so shadow walk. Was yeah. It, was it called that when you came into the project? Yeah. Okay. Yeah. You know, so, right after Sherry passed, Art reached out because he had a song and it was called Death of a Siren. Yeah. And that was the first thing we worked on together that was sort of post that experience. And he was still very much in it. Um, so he would come to work on the song and I, I wouldn't ask him how he was. I wouldn't dare. Um, it was more he needed to find a place to put some of that energy and to be creative. And um, so I was grateful to be a part of, of facilitating that for him. But uh, to work on something with that level of sort of emotional weight and that rawness is, is extremely difficult, far more difficult for art. But even as a producer to come in and, and, you know, this is the only job I've had is playing music for the last 37, 38 years. So, you know, there are days where you kind of come in and you go to work, right? It kind of feels like a job. Yeah. And then there are days like you have with art where you come in and you know there's much more at stake for him. And that this is his um, way of communicating with the world is is music and, and his lyrics. So to be able to facilitate that, it, it, it takes a different level of focus that not all artists require. And it really is a privilege to work with him that way. But uh, holy cow, that first the first song was extremely uh, difficult and very tenuous. And I was really proud of him just for getting through it. I saw a post from Art uh, just a couple of days ago. Uh, it was writing uh, uh, to his audience, to his fans. Mm -hmm. And he said, um, what do you guys want to hear from the stage? I'm going to go out and I'm going to be doing some two, some some songs. What do you want to hear? Uh, okay. Does no one want to hear anything from the last three new albums? Do you all want to live in the past, my old past? <laughs> That's what he was implying. <laughs> it's funny because... When we played at the Calgary Folk Fest with Art, it was all new songs. The only old song he did was, I think, an unreleased one called Soul Power <laughs> that he dug out of the vaults. But everything was from the last two records. I don't know. He yeah. moves forward. Him and Jan are the same that way. They're not nostalgic. They're like, I'm doing something new. I want to do this. Like, I did that. That was a different person that did that music. Now I'm someone different, you know? Well, he is a different person, although the, the basic core of Art Bergman is still that guy. He, yeah. There's a dark, there's a dark core there, where yeah, and and he's, it shows itself in really, re, it shows itself yeah. in really, really, really dark jokes. Yeah, and extremely vulnerable and raw lyrics. You know, I would venture to say he's a he's a punk rock Leonard Cohen. Now there's a terrible there soundbite for you. There you go. But to me, he has that depth of vulnerability and honesty and beauty in describing it. He goes where a lot of people fear to tread. You know. Okay, Russell Broom, how long was the process from the time you started to the time you finished? How many months? Not that many. I'd okay. say six, 
Okay. Six to seven in, months. In those yeah. four to six months. Yeah. Did you see the music and the experience of creating these songs change art? Did he come to grips with the, his grief? Did it give him some healing? That's all I want to know. The, yes. I think, I think the version of art that he currently is, is incredibly inspiring and positive. And uh, it, he was, he was like, this was a difficult record to make. And he was the most solid person in the room every day. Wow. Like, and I don't think that's sort of the story about him, but uh, he was a total leader on this. He had great ideas. He had great vision. He was brave to follow other ideas. And he was positive the entire time. Like he, uh, he made this a difficult process actually really pleasurable. And I, I did not think I would say that. I think I happen to think I'm going to tell you right now. I think it's Juno material. I think it's as good as he's ever done. I I agree. I think he's he's captured a moment in time that is something we all fear, but he's interpreted it through his lens in a way that makes it beautiful and heartbreaking and yeah, it's it's an important record as a human being. I, think. I want to thank you for your time. Shadow Walk. Uh, we're going to be talking about this one quite a bit. Yeah. And art. And you. And your role in this. Well, yeah, it's a special one. You know, it's... Um, I'm proud of everything I get to work on. But uh, this one, just, it felt like... I think there are songs on it that feel like they're you're seeing pages of a diary you should never, ever be allowed to see. And there's other things that are so filled with hope and and, uh, and positivity that it almost feels like it's it's synthesized because that's the only way you can get through grief is to talk yourself through it. There's so many layers to this record. Two, um, two things. Did he keep a diary? I don't know. He, he has books. He showed me his books, but those are lyrics. Lyric books. Yeah, I don't know if they're diaries. I, they're, you know. Okay, yeah, well, I, then, then the lyrics become the diary. I think so. Yeah. Yeah. Yeah, there's pieces of him lying around the studio somewhere. <laughs> when you finish... Uh, either either an album or a track that you particularly like. Mm-hmm. Do you uh, take yourself for a drive and listen to it in a car speaker like others would as you drive? No. So no, you're not. I, so yeah. you're not a hopeless romantic. No. No hopeless. Yeah. But. <laughs> uh, no, it's you know I love the work and. There's a little, I get a, a tickle in my chest when something feels like it's a success to me. Okay. It's just, it's a little fleeting moment in time. And I love that. And I love that spark. And I love that feeling. Um, it's like, as a producer, it's those things where you listen to a song and all of a sudden it feels like a record. Yep. You know, it's, it's, I can't really quantify what it is, but there's something about it where you just feel the emotional intent is coming through in a way that is hitting you the same way you hope it hits a listener. Um, and those little moments are great, but I don't really indulge in them. If they happen, which I is my goal, and and I and I acknowledge it and I feel it, then great. Then I feel the song is okay. done. I do have one last question. We know that radio mm-hmm. loves Jan Arden, and the, the, Jan doesn't have any problem getting played. Really, <laughs> she's she they're, they're we'll welcome her with open arms. Radio mm-hmm. Canadian radio has no idea what to do with Art Bergman, except for two, CBC. Yeah. And CKUA. Right, right. Well, radio sells tires. It doesn't sell records, right? So, <laughs> like, the impetus to play someone like ours, I don't know. It, it's, I think art, similar to Jan, you know, makes music for personal consumption. You know, it's a dialogue between him and the listener. It's not him dictating things to masses of people. Yes, it is. And I think that's a different experience for listening. And sometimes where radio is at a forefront whether you're in your car driving somewhere or you're in a restaurant and you're hearing it some of the environments don't really invite that level of connection to the music and if you don't have it to an art bergman song um then you're missing out on a huge portion of what he's offering the world thank you it's a privilege to talk to you terry and thanks for all you do for music in canada oh man thank you thank you thank you thank you he is art bergman i wish i had actually the album cover to hold up it's a candle uh, and it's a it's a darkened room, and the candle is the light. Uh, the 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 uh, I don't know where the shot came from, but the album that we're going to talk about is called Shadow Walk. Art Bergman's our guest.
into a legacy of love. Yes, uh, candles shot on the back is of my late wife Sherry. Yep. But uh, it just arrived yesterday to headquarters in Toronto at WeWork, and uh, you don't have a picture of the cover. We could send it to you. <laughs> I I I have the I was sent the cover what I thought was the cover with the candle on it but if that's not it never mind. That's it. Yes, that's okay. it. Okay. Oh, by the way, uh, we're talking on September the thirtieth, my friend, the day after your album gets released. So I'm going to ask my first question. So Art, Great. Art, last night, you kicked off the album release uh, journey at the rickshaw in Vancouver. How did it go? <laughs> Why are we doing this? Uh, time travel. Hmm. No, I'll, was... I'll take it back. No, I'll take it back. It's not fair. Um, I love the fact that you're going to kick off this uh, this album, September the 29th at the Rickshaw, and uh, which was last night, of course. And but um, we're talking weeks earlier. What What are your thoughts about going back into that room? What do you remember about uh, your time in the Rickshaw? Do you remember your time in the Rickshaw and why that room? Yeah, uh, I, I, I'm confused now. I thought we were going to talk in the present tense, but okay. uh, I remember playing that. I don't know, and I, I uh, have a difficulty with time. I don't even know what day it is half the time, so, and that's a beautiful thing. Uh, I try to live in the now, and the rickshaw, I don't, I don't know how many it was probably I play every few years somewhere, and that was one of the places. A beautiful big stage, beautiful big crowd, 400, 500 people, and it was uh, immense. <laughs> it's more than just you in a room by yourself. Um, you moved back to Vancouver. What part of town did you head for? East Van, of course, my my old stomping grounds. Two blocks off Commercial Drive. Very nice. Right Grand yeah, Second Avenue. You, um, what's it like being back on the coast? Mm, uh, noisy, loud. I watch rats at night go up and down my alley. <laughs> <laughs> Inspiring. In short, uh, are there are there are there, are there faces you are, are there faces you recognize years. people you know? No, I haven't met many. The odd, odd wave, and uh, and people know my old records, don't know the new records. But uh, I, I inform them of what I'm doing with my yes. life and my yes. new songs. Always writing, so got a constant. I saw Const that post. I saw, uh, no, no. I saw that. Listen, I saw that post the other day where you were saying, "Okay." I'm going to go back on stage here. Tell me what songs you want to hear. What can I play? And and don't don't just give me the old stuff. Do, do any of you guys have any of you guys listened to my last three albums? Yeah, uh, a lot of them had, and I was uh, pleasantly uh, reminded uh, uh, how many fans I have here here and there. And, well, mm -hmm. it's the internet. Who who knows where they are? But. Uh, uh, People have an encyclopedic knowledge of my work um, more than I have, more than I can remember. And, and uh, there were some awesome suggestions of what songs to play, and I will, I will compress it into a set list of you know maybe ninety minutes, two hours, and uh, that that's a brain crushing work. <laughs> Uh, R Russell was telling me that in your set uh, at the uh, Calgary Folk Festival, almost all those songs were new. Uh, yeah, uh, new to the audience. I, and I haven't played Calgary in six years, and I haven't played Vancouver. What's it been? Five, five years. And uh, late stage Empire Dementia came out, which is one of my greatest records ever. And uh, people don't know the songs. It was awesome to play songs like uh, Christo Fascists for the first time. Uh, I will tell you up front, uh, I'm supposed to be a, a critical journalist, 
being asked for my, uh, not by you, but by others about, well, what do you think of the album? I think that Shadow Walk is, in fact, uh, your best work. Yeah, it's uh, maybe kind of stuff I could have done sooner, but it uh, takes a big event to change your mindset yes. and uh, expression of... Uh, of love in, in the uh, in the work is something uh, new to me, very uh, very to the bone. I'll say it so you don't have to. Uh, Arthur, you uh, you lost Sherry, your wife, of thirty years, in March of twenty twenty two, and this album Shadow Walk is a direct result of that and an answer to. A, a dialogue with yourself. It's all about Sherry when she was there and Sherry when she's not. Um, uh, I'm hoping in that whole process that you found uh, um, healing of some kind, any kind. Uh, yeah, the album goes through stages of, of grief and ends up uh, on the other side to acceptance and and love and uh, it's a beautiful beautiful i don't know how long it is hour of transition involved the depths of pain to to out uh, to love on the other side i'm going to start if I, it's okay with you cuz there's lots of things i can ask as we go but i want to, i want people to hear some of the music i can't play it all but i'll do my best uh, yeah you uh, the first thing you released you released was raw naked monday and i think somewhere along the way i saw a quote from you saying uh, it's an actual yes that's actually happened raw naked monday can you be more specific <laughs> <laughs> it was no, a monday you were naked i have been naked on that monday after after killing sunday yeah. the day that sherry died I, i've uh, i've met someone and she pulled me through the uh poet who writes on on half the wordsies of the record yeah uh, Fisher Kay, and uh, she helped me through the whole process could you have done it by yourself um nope okay I, well, I was I was ready to kill myself at the beginning of this venture so and with uh, her and Russell's help uh, turning the controls I mean uh, it's a beautiful thing now <laughs> Save for Monday. Chill the 
best friends Never get in on a raw sexy Monday Played out in a room It's all of a Monday Played out in a swoon No longer a vision No longer strength Confessing, confessing Cause you know she seems like the sun Of made incandescent We live in love and illumination On raw naked Monday It's all love on Monday Death of a Siren. Yeah, that starts it. Well, the poem Jagged starts into Death of a Siren. That's right. Uh, uh, I wrote that within three weeks of Sherry's death. I I just, an immense gift from her. It's just a gift to her. You made a note, and I appreciate it. It's me trying to see my wife uh, in everything around me. Did it work for you? Oh uh, yeah, she's part of my DNA. So sure. she lives. Yeah. She lives. Yes, she does. Yes, she does. As your heart beats, she does. Yeah. So, um, death of a siren is a, a, a did it? Uh, I was going to say write itself, which is not fair. Did it form itself? Did it just come out naturally? Yes, it just came out. <laughs> yeah. Mm-hmm. Well, so, some of this can be painful. That's all. Yeah, I wanted to turn the Leonard Cohen line on its on its head too. The uh, there is no crack that lets in the light. Yeah, you were once described, by the way, as uh, the punk Leonard Cohen. Uh, I'll take it. Okay, okay. I want to play "Death of a Siren." Uh, is there anything you want to tell the audience out there? Uh, it's astoundingly beautiful, and if you don't cry, you don't have a heart. Shut the door. Were you born 
Love's what we're here for It's no crack Let's in the light There is no light Killing Sundays. I understand Killing Sundays. That's a horrible song. <laughs> <laughs> Trying to kill time, kill a whole day out of existence. Uh, and, make money. and then on to Raw Naked Money, which is my new holy day. There you go. Okay. Because they're, they're tied by grief. They're all tied by grief. However, there is hope. There's hope. Yes. In Westerly Caress. There is hope in there. Yeah, that's first intimations of uh, of hope came flying over the mountains from Patricia Kay. And I found out she's an amazing poet, and we started to work together. And that song, I took lines of hers, and that was the first one we did together. Did you recognize yourself in the music? Was, did you? What? It's my music, so I yes. I understand that. It was very personal. Did you... Did you recognize yourself in there? Uh, in in the words? In the words that came? Yep. Yeah. Uh, you have to have to name a. I, I'm sorry, I'm having a block, but what the words are. <laughs> How about let's just stick with hope. Pardon? Let's just stick with the word hope. There's hope in there. Yeah, the hope comes on on the wind, oh, and, and the caress on the wind uh, that someone else is, has experienced grief 
which we all will experience, deep yes. grief. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, there's a track, the next track, uh, uh, excuse me for just doing the tracks. I just want to uh, uh, find a way to play these tunes. Uh, the next track is Love 3. Was there a Love 1 and Love 2? Well, yeah, there's Love to the First Power, Love to the Second Power, and this is uh, Love to the Third Power. So Love Cubed. And you included some of Sherry's words. You want to share, yeah. them, you want to share them with us? Uh yeah, it was a bit of advice she left for her family. Uh, regret wears thin through this old skin. Let's I got see. one. Okay. Use your youth so, while you can. Yes. Give your love while alive. Yes. Don't don't waste a second of your life with all the, this combobulation about you. I'm going to grill you unmercifully. Uh, the, the, <laughs> you two, are. Two things I love about cut and paste. It's not written by you, which makes it very special. And I love the tabla by Sonny. It's really nice. Sonny Mataru, yes. Uh, he been played on that and Candlelight. And uh, uh, I've always loved uh, Eastern Sound that Beatles brought into the public mind. And uh, yeah. I wanted that sound for a couple of these tracks. Who wrote the song? Uh, Donna Kerbel, an uh, old, old, dear friend of mine from Toronto. And uh, she's been through her own heartbreak and issues. And uh, that song is about addiction. And uh, she nails it pretty hard and with beautiful words. He's... Had she written it with you in mind? No, no. Okay. She, she wrote She's got a band called Luxury Bob. Yes. And uh, that's the artistic name of her work. Something for the pain is the line that stands out for me. Mm -hmm. Something for the pain. Uh, you know, find fast free fall. Yes. Jump from the plane. Something for the pain. Jump from the plane and find fast free fall. A 
gets my pen Cause hey I'll be a freak for anything Bring on my muse I got the ink Where is the song that finds peace at the end of this story, this album? Where you... It's uh, to Ronick and Money Children. Oh, there's a uh, hymn for us and uh, Candlelight at the end. Well, there's both of them, yes. Yes. Hymn for us. Was that not one of the singles that you released? Yeah, we came out with Ronick and Monday. Okay. All right. Enough about the tracks. I just want to talk about Art Bergman. So show me show me some of his heart, will you? Here's we talk here. about Max. <laughs> <laughs> um, how was, by the way, let me t- take you back to the Calgary Folk Festival. How was that performance for you? What, how were you feeling getting out on stage? And what did it feel like for you? It was great. The band was flawless. They were amazing. I was the only one who screwed up. I... Uh, I started a song with a capo on my guitar neck in the, on the wrong fret, and uh, mm. it came out as this big wash of metal. And in two seconds, I recognized it and and uh, charmingly changed my capo, and we roared on. And and, and uh, that was the only screw up. And uh, those two sisters, Zadrovich sisters, are amazing singers and guitar and bass. And then Russell Broom, of course, was yeah. immaculate, as is his want. And what did it feel like being out there? Uh, it felt strange. They had us outside the festival uh, where people could watch us for free, so that was okay, I guess. But uh, what did it feel like? Yeah, it felt like something I do. <laughs> All right. Do. Um, can you tell me? I'm I'm trying to n- not ask the question that wants to be asked, which is, did this exercise, this these months, these weeks, these minutes of making this music, creating this music, recording it, capturing it, mixing it, did it save you? Oh yeah, it kept kept uh, me busy the songs came some of them in the middle of the night like the hymn came at five in the morning sherry said to me 
please a hymn for all of us and uh, wrote that song in an hour that morning mm. but uh, and then fine tuning and then going into Russell's place to record every new song as it came out it was a, a beautiful heartbreaking to beautiful year and, and then in the studio all the demos with Russell in the studio and putting it all together it's been quite quite a year and a half now and you moved and i moved from alberta to vancouver that was a huge endeavor we had a house full of yeah. shit to get rid of uh sherry was a collector of <laughs> fine things and things that she hated to see go to waste and uh, we had to distribute all of that stuff and uh, i kept all the books and important art and uh, here I am, and with some awesome help from people in Calgary, to load up the truck and get it out here. And uh, it's been several journeys at once, I suppose. Uh, did you? Um, I know that you brought you brought your lyric books with you. You've shown me those books. You've opened them up and, and shown them to me. Do they? Are they your diary as well, as being the lyrics books? Are they your diary as well? Can you mark time with them? Uh, no. <laughs> well, my songs are my diary, yes. As, as I move through life, uh, diuretically writing it all down and changing it into songs, uh, my songs are my diary, yes. Too. Okay. All right. Simple answer. Okay. Thank you. Rather you say it than me. Um, now, the rickshaw. Uh, after the rickshaw, post-rickshaw, when they carry you through the audience on their shoulders and throw you out the front door, what do you do with the rest of this year? What do you do with this album? How do you roll it out? Do you have the strength to tour? No, I don't have the strength to tour. Uh, I don't have the infrastructure to tour, so uh, I will play the, the odd show. I suppose I'm playing Toronto November 2nd, uh, and then, uh, you know, I'll be out shilling the record, I suppose, to no, to no great degree, but uh, I can't, I can't, uh, I have scoliosis, I can't just... Uh, stand up and play so you know that's uh used to be my forte is uh yes feeling about the stage so i can't do that so uh people have to suffice with the music i mean, i can still play guitar and sing really well so i shall endeavor <laughs> the songs should lift everyone up and make them revolt wow Legacy, legacy. 
sea of love In our love's a legacy Legacy of love be done shoot them hard into the ground make growing joy the only sound all creatures hear the sacred song this broken heart sing all night long the timeless plea let kindness be a future By the way, the songs and the music will attract people, many people, who've gone through the same process of loss. They'll, you'll be sharing your journey with them, right? That's right. Uh, this, this album's for everyone. It's not just, uh, I met a lot of people uh, after, uh, after this happened uh, who uh, appreciate my words, so uh, it's a beautiful thing. So find some of your own words that you want to say about this album, and I'll step out of the way. Go. I mean, everything's in the in the in the music and the words. I sweated and cried over these over these songs and worked really hard on them. And with uh, Patrizia's help, I mean, she's an awesome wordsmith. I mean, she's encyclopedic, man. Oh, incredible. And uh, working together has been uh, the highlights of my life. Um, so proud! So proud of uh, so proud of our work together. It's just immense. I don't know what else to say about it. It's uh, it has such beauty in there. You can uh, dwell on, and you can listen to it over and over. I believe because there's new bits of uh, cones of wisdom in there. If you look and listen hard enough. Well done. Well done. Thank you. Because, you know, this this doesn't work if you don't empty your heart. And, 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 yeah, it's emptied out. Spill I, it out on the page. <laughs> I had a, a conversation with Jim Cuddy about Mariposa. They were at Mariposa. And Cuddy's on stage with Blue Rodeo looking at the audience and thinking, how many of these these young audience members even know who we are or these songs uh, and then he real and then he realized yeah. that um, that in fact that they were they were mouthing the words that they were saying there's ge a generational thing going on do you think those those that audience that you had in the beginning has stuck with you is taking going through this journey as well my cult yes yeah, that's right. yeah your cult used to hang on every single word I say yep uh <laughs> Yeah, they've stuck with me through thick and thin. I hope they have a few children that can uh, can listen. I think there's a few grandkids by now. Yeah, okay. but uh, a bit more radio play would help so I could get to... Yeah, the children are coming. Actually, yeah, yeah one just wrote me the other day, uh, Allie Sullivan. She's a daughter, and she is a child now who's coming. So there's 
there's one there's one uh, two generations my music has passed through beautiful it is beautiful it's fantastic it is fantastic and and the art that you are now the music you are now is so different from and yet similar to what you were doing many years ago it's just introspective it's it's quieter it's well thought out it's not so angry it's understanding it's you've matured one must progress no <laughs> and the more you learn you want to get it put it into your mute works so it's an evolution and uh I found I, I can sing really well. I don't have to scream. Uh, I think the music lasts longer that way. Actually, I think you should think about a spoken word record down the way. And I also think uh, a, a, book would, a book yep. would a book would we would be in order. Yeah, a uh, book. We're going to work on a book of uh, of my songs, with lyrics, and uh, poetry. And yes, uh, spoken word is coming next with ambient noise behind it okay uh where do you think the hit where where do you think the hit is on this uh what track are we going to love the most i got mine i don't know it's uh people are different i have gothic goth fans so they will have love cubed and candlelight and cut and paste uh uh I like them all. They each have a place in the in the year and a half journey. Winter fire. But that for the hits, raw naked Mondays is a hit. Yep. Yep. Okay. Uh, were you listening to any other music while you were writing? Any other bands? No. Any other artists? No. Okay. I didn't listen to anything. Okay. I'm not up on whatever's out there. I couldn't listen to music for a long time, except yeah. for the stuff that came out of me. Yeah. Shame. I'm getting back into it. I, I don't know what, what what's uh, current or the rigor. I mean, I like good music. And, uh, there's good music and there's bad music. There's ACDC. Rock and uh, roll. Straight up rock and roll. <laughs> <laughs> Skinny puppy. Skinny puppy. Uh, <laughs> now, um, that post that you did a couple of days ago about uh, don't you guys don't request don't request the old stuff uh, request the new stuff. Are any of you guys listening to my last three albums? I don't think so. You spat out of the no, I didn't. of the old. Yes, you did uh, of the old songs <laughs> of the old songs. Those are the songs from the other art. Uh, which ones can you bring forward and still sing? Which ones would you bring? Are there few and well, far between? There's so many, I have to uh, learn them all with my band. <laughs> Relearn them, memorize them. I will I will do my best to... Mm -hmm. But uh, it's amazing what an influence. Uh, I notice people request the songs that there were videos for in the day, much sure. music. Okay. Bound for Vegas and, and a contract and... Our little secret, even, and uh, so it's quite amazing the, the influence that those videos had. But uh, other people are more well versed in my work and requested the oddest songs, so I'm going to try and do a mix of of all of those okay. in my performances. Uh, uh, Russell said that uh, your voice uh, was bang on. You, he didn't have to adjust to anything. That your voice is. It was uh, in great shape. This is good to hear. How's the rest of you working out? Uh, is your body going to hold up? Um, we shall see. Uh, well, what do you think? You know. Well, yeah, I do know. I have to see a specialist, see if he can help me. Okay. I can't walk. So it's very far. So okay. I want to be able to stand up and play. But uh, yeah. I was going to physio for a while, but it uh, made all, everything worse. So I have to do some investigation on what's happening with my uh, my joints. I might need new hips, new hips and shoulders. <laughs> hmm. Okay. Uh, you know, we only wish nothing but the best 
for you. The fact that you and I are, A, upright and breathing is ridiculous. We're lucky as hell. We shouldn't, we should count our blessings. You yeah, know, I'm, I'm many times lucky. I can tell you that. Many times, Art, and many, many times. I'm astonished I'm still talking to you. Astonished. I've died many times. <laughs> yep, yeah. yep, yeah, yep, yeah, yep. Yeah. Okay, uh, good luck with this uh, shadow walk of yours. Yeah, and I will, I will return. Listen, listen. Knock him dead at the rickshaw. That was yesterday. <laughs> that was yesterday. Thank you, Terry David Mulligan.